And if I could tell you the biggest gift that I've had throughout my life, it is having the right person in my life at the right time. And I'm gonna keep here a long time here because it begins with my parents. Mother, father. <laughs> Don't be nervous, we're going straight to 10 years old. <laughs> and I'm in Soviet Russia, Soviet Union, and believe it or not, there's some guests here from Soviet Union, they won't let me lie. There were no art stores. And if there were art stores, which were called actually bookstores for some reason, there were no art supplies there, no there were books there. So for me to become an artist at age 10, I had no chance to have materials. It was my father, George, who actually somehow miraculously came up with paper about that size and that quality and some temper paint and brushes. And each color, he had to bribe the officials right, for each different color. And my mother, as soon as I made, I started making for some reason black paintings with white stripes and drips. And as soon as I made them, as my dad brought the supplies, my mother said it should be in the museum. So thank you, Mom. <laughs> so if I had to tell you <laughs> what this work is about, it's much more interesting to me to tell you how I felt making this work rather than what it is about. And how I felt was a way to come home, a way to come back to that child, that girl of 10 years old, who is not afraid of anything, who is not in an art school, who doesn't know any art history, who simply loves paint, and throwing it and discovering that if you take a brush and flip it, it makes splashes. And it's a way, really, it's a liberation after all these years to come back and to truly enjoy and to break boundaries, to make paintings look like drawings, to make them finish look finished, to make drawings look like paintings, to hang paper without frames. Okay? And so it's a kind of return home. Now I come a little bit forward, skip a few more years, and you know, we all know that meeting the right person, and usually it's a husband, it's a wife, it's a child that is not born to us yet. But in my case, one of the biggest discoveries was my muse and collaborator, Mark Snyder. Yay. My husband is here, don't be jealous. It's a kind of different marriage. <laughs> Mark and I met 12 years ago and my life, my artistic journey, has never been the same. He has allowed me to continue to look at him, dressed and undressed, forget about nude, skin away, bones away, rip the soul in front of me every time that I see him. But if you ask me what makes Mark so great, it's not that he looks interesting. It's not that he speaks interesting. All of you can pick up a poem that he wrote about this body of work right up there in the pedestal. It is not that he's creative. It is not that he could levitate in air for three hours without moving, not even that. It is a kind of spark that he gives to me and to other artists. I have to share him, this is unfortunate in my relationship. <laughs> the kind of spark that starts and lights the fire. And I hope it is the fire that you really feel from this painting, from our artistic marriage. The wings appeared just a few weeks ago when luckily Mark was gifted generously by a very famous artist, Jonathan Bickard, a very famous sculptor, um, who deaccessioned these wings and gifted it to Mark. And Mark said, I'm going to try them out, literally, first time with you. So this was my privilege. And when I love painting bodies, I think that through looking at the naked body, you are seeing the story of who we are of what we bring to the world, our fragility, our strengths. But nothing compared to when Mark paraded into my studio naked with huge black wings and went up on the model stand. And I felt like he finally found the missing part. It made me remember that I have those wings too, and all of us do too. And that's how this whole work was born, from that gift.